it's uh, for you. It's probably just been, you know, just a week since the last class, and that's true. But for me, I have been in two different states, and I have been <laughs> sharing other stuff, and so it's like. And then when I get back here, I try to get back on Tuesday so I can share, and then Wednesday so I can share, and Thursday so I can share. So sometimes it's like, where were we and what? Yeah. Yeah. It's like I'm caught in the middle of the week looking both ways for Sunday. I don't know what that means. but Anyway. So we are in Genesis 15, so let's go to Genesis 15, and I want to go ahead and read <clears throat> again verses 1 through 6, just in case, <clears throat> excuse me, just in case your week has also been full of many, many things. <clears throat> it helps me to go back and to relook to sometimes over some things because the Holy Spirit has many things to say that he wants to share and um, we usually get something from him and we go oh that's it you know like like he doesn't have you know a whole universe full of stuff on that one verse but <clears throat> but so that's why it's good to go back Genesis 15, beginning with the verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou <clears throat> be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. So Abraham or Abram is still searching, wanting the seed, wanting the firstborn, wanting the one that the Lord keeps talking to him about. He's still searching. I mean, he's searching because he, he's looking to Lot. And now he's looking to Eliezer. He is searching, but he is making presumptive conclusions along the way, Lot will be it, Eliezer will be it, Ishmael will be it. <clears throat> um, and uh, so again, here he, here's where he brings up Eliezer. Um, Eliezer means guide or helper or even schoolmaster. <clears throat> and, um, you know, we get, we get that from uh, Galatians chapter 4. If you want to turn there, we'll just look at uh, verse 1 through where, however far I go till I stop. <clears throat> but the idea being that he is, he is wanting the Lord, okay? He is wanting the Lord. There is a heart there. There is a desire. And may I just say to you that, you know, it's good to have that desire for him, not, you know, for yourself, but for him. And as long as you have that and are open, then the Lord will start moving on your behalf. But there is a process, and that process uh, is described here in Galatians 4, um, and that's one re good reason to look at it. Galatians 4.1 says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. And notice, <clears throat> he's saying you're the heir, but you have to realize it's like you being Abraham and the, the seed being the true heir. Abraham is an heir because God wants the seed. <clears throat> okay, God wants the seed out of him. Okay. Uh, but as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Okay, so 
what does it mean to be a child here? Well, we would say uh, carnal Christian, or we would say uh, someone who um, who doesn't know all the doctrines of God, or someone who is just you know kind of new Christian, whatever. But. But Galatians and Genesis is clearly pointing out the immaturity of Abram at this point. That's why he's still called Abram. Does it bother you that we keep having to call him Abram? Don't you want to go to Abraham? Okay, well, it bothered God too. <laughs> because there's an immaturity there that um, he has not come to or he has not made the leap over and that relates to the air and this scriptures right here relates to the air and genesis again relates to the air and it relates to who are we assuming that is so important in our story in this story in our story is it me is it you know and who is the air is it you know, is it something or some, and we've discussed some of that before, but I mean, I, I thought it was significant to how the Holy Spirit brought that out, that, that we look at somebody and we see a certain attribute in them and we go, they have the Lord, and so, you know, I'm going to seek that. Well, that's just dumb. You seek Jesus, and that heir can be that one that we're looking at in someone else and thinking that's it. That heir could be your lot you know that would be your lot in life if you chose that if that's what you chose to pursue that to pursue that as this is the air this is how you get it see that this is how you get it you know you're gonna have to find the Lord for yourself you're gonna have to seek the Lord nobody else is gonna be able to I mean yes as you know, there are those, there are pastors and, and ministers and helpers and all this kind of stuff that can carry us for a while, but can never carry us to the sun. They can just carry us as, like schoolmasters and stuff. We're, you know, maybe I should shut up and read this. What do you think? Okay. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, Differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. In other words, really, he, he is the heir, and all of it is his, but it's not just his because he's special or spiritual or, you know, been a Christian for a long time and didn't fall away or, I don't, you know, I can't even name all the stuff that we could go to, but this is going to end up with Christ being revealed in him. These verses in Galatians, yes, in Genesis 2, the Son being revealed in him, in, in the very scriptures that we are talking about here. <clears throat> Differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but he is under, he is under. Amen? And so the list grows. And may I say... Hi, everybody on Skype. <laughs> Praise God. And so the, um, the, he needs to be under for a while, and that's not easy for us. We want to be, you know, do you know that what Abram means? Do you know the translation of that? It means exalted father. Do you know what Abraham means? Father of a multitude. In other words, the seed coming into many. Huh? It's a big difference. One is, oh yeah, see, God says you're no longer exalted father, dude. It's going to be about the seed, you know. So, so, you know, shake loose from your attachment to yourself as, well, I'm what it's all about, and I'm what's important, and I'm the thing. Jesus is the true thing, and God will never change on that. God, because you know why God will never change? God will never change on that because He's God, uh, Father. the Father, and that's what He's going to do. It's always going to be there. 
that was before the foundation of the world. It's not like before the foundation of the world in eternity past. How long is that? A, a long time. <laughs> okay. It's not like an eternity past that he's going, Jesus, you've just been everything to me, but I'm going to create this thing, and there's going to, I'm going to find a bunch of special people down there that are better than you. He's not going to do that. He's not going to elevate you above him. He's going to put him in you. Thus, Randy, keep reading. <clears throat> but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. All right, so there is an appointed time, but it's not like this. Okay, if you're a Christian for 10 years, I'll reveal Christ in you. Or if you search the scriptures for the next you know, um, let's just go with 20 years, and I'll reveal Christ in you. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, who's the truth? And what does it make you? It makes you free because now you're free by Christ. Just another verse that's really speaking of, of the coming of the Son, as it were, the, re the revealing of the Son, but the revealing of the... You know, what's the, what's the name of the youth group's gathering? Sunrise. sunrise. When the sun rises in your heart. The day dawn and the day start. Is that in the, in the Word of God? Yeah. That's what... See, I can just... The Holy Spirit can just keep jumping. I mean... Because that's what Peter was talking about. He's the one who said that, and he saw that on the Mount of Transfiguration. And he saw the revealing of Christ there as the day star and the uh, day dawning arising in our hearts, not having an event on a Mount of Transfiguration for each and every one of us, but seeing Jesus and not seeing anybody else. Remember, he was overshadowed, and they saw Jesus only. Moses, you've been good stuff. You're out of here. Elijah, great prophet. You're out of here. Peter, stop wanting to make booths. I don't want you here. You know? James, John. Now, the truth is we are there. And he's in us. He's in us. But if we're a child, and that's what these scriptures are referring to, I mean, we may say, you know, I mean, and, and we do. I've been a Christian this long, or I know this much stuff. I am no longer a child. You are a child because you keep putting yourself in the place of the heir. You keep thinking more highly of yourself than you do of him. And as long as you're lifted, you're an exalted father, mother, Christian, da-da-da-da, it doesn't matter. Exalted. In your own eyes, there's no room for Jesus because he won't push his way. He won't push his way. You know, if you humble yourself, what happens? He'll exalt you. If you exalt yourself, you'll be brought down. You know. And I've often said, if you exalt yourself, you, you know, we all can have trouble with the devil, right? Okay. But if you exalt yourself, now your trouble's with God. Because he's going to bring you down. You say, the devil's attacked me. No, that's God. <laughs> you know, get low and say, I just want your son. I don't want to become better, smarter, spiritual. I don't want to become any of that. I don't want to become. I want him to be. And you seek that. You don't, you don't, you don't tuck that in your doctrinal, uh, you know, shelves and, and say, well, because I, I, that's one of my doctrines, I'm okay. No. Your heart goes after the Lord. Your, your, your uh, hunger is for the Lord. It's not for spiritual knowledge. And you can be hunger, hungry for spiritual knowledge, you know. I'm, oh, I'm so hungry to see something new in the Word. What? You know. All right. So he goes on. Uh, you're under that until the time appointed of the Father. So 
when Jesus, you know, we talk about the rapture and all that stuff. Well, we don't, but people do. And, and Jesus, uh, we talk about him coming back at an hour and a time we think not. Well, why, how would that relate here? It would relate here because this says it's a time appointed to the Father where he is revealed in you and no man knows that but the Father because this is a Father issue about a son, not a Christian issue. Am I yelling at you? I'm just excited. I mean, I, I just love Jesus. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll be real sweet now. And if you just be sweet and kind... God will come to you in the night. There'll be no cross. It'll all be gentle. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Um, erase that last part. <clears throat> um, the time appointed of the Father. The Father. I mean, this is kind of amazing if you think about it, that... <clears throat> Even the son doesn't have control over this because it's a father issue and he doesn't intrude in areas that are not his. He's sons. <laughs> the father fathers. The Holy Spirit spirits. I can't, I can't describe all the... I mean, you know, the Holy Spirit is described as he's like the wind. He, he listeth where he will. He blows where he will. We, you don't know why or what or I mean I remember the other day the wind was blowing real hard and I was standing outside and it was so cool because these leaves were blowing up here but over here on this one they were blowing this direction but not as strong and there was all kind of movement going on but that was all like a you know and I was just going you know the word of God says the spirit is like this and it reminds me of him because he's crazy about wanting to reveal the sun. And he's just all over the place. <laughs> so, even so we, well, when we were children, okay, so, which could be like now, yeah. Um, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. What does that mean? Well, the man was keeping me down. No. It's not talking about that. It's talking about being influenced by all this stuff and constantly, you know, well, this happens over here. We go, oh, no. And then this happens. We go, oh, yay, thank God. My, you know, the Lord just moved in my life because something good happened. And then the rest of the time, it's like either the devil or nothing. You know, thank you, Jesus comes up, you know, once every three days over some something that, is better than what it was before instead of I just want you Lord I don't want to be under the elements of this world I don't want all this stuff moving me and and making me go off on my my tirades or my fears or my uh, pride or my uh, all the things that should be dead I don't want that, okay? I don't want that. I want to be influenced regularly by the Father's desire for the Son, by the Son's desire to exalt the Father, by the Holy Spirit's desire to exalt the Son, and to, and to be changed in a in a real way, in, in, a, in an eternal way. It's moving you toward a being that can handle the eternal realities of God. But if you're just, you know, constantly here, and, and you know, that's one good way to measure yourself, you know, say, well, how's my growth doing? Do you have any problems? You know, do you have a list? Do you have, you know, is this this? I want this change and I want that. And, if, you know, and if we can just do that and this and that and that and that, I'd be really happy. I'd be a happy Christian. No, no, you wouldn't be. Well, you might be a happy Christian, but you won't be what God wants. You won't be what God wants. And I'm not talking about unhappiness is what he wants. I'm talking about Christ. 
and whatsoever state you find yourself they're in content do you realize that anything this is where you can be unconditional anything that comes your way you can respond by Christ instead of, oh, yeah, my soul, and all that, oh, praise God, and, oh, my God, no, no, you know, all the junk we go through. You can respond by Christ in all of that, in any state that you find yourself. Or you can just live as a regular person like people out there live who are not even born again. Not even born again. They act exactly the same way, you know. Have you ever sat down with somebody who wanted to tell you their problems, and then you 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 could, and then you start fellowshipping in their sufferings because you have similar problems? Oh, I like talking to you because you have. I I've gone through that. I've been I've been there, <laughs> you know. Folks, it's fellowship and in his sufferings, the cross, and the spirit in which he handles that, instead of us sitting around just listening to each other's problems and then patting each other on the shoulder and patting each other's flesh, you know? You'll get through this and you'll be better for it. Will you? I mean, come on, will you? You'll be, your flesh will be soothed for a while, but it'll come right back up over some other issue. It, your flesh isn't gonna just go away. You know, it's not like a stray dog that comes in your yard and you yell at it and throw a rock and it runs away. Your flesh is gonna, even if it looks like it's leaving, he's, he'll be back. He'll be back, barking up the wrong tree in you again. So, I don't know why I cannot get through these verses, but <clears throat> why? This, is, this is important stuff, though. I mean, it gets, uh, yes, okay. Randy, you meddle too much in our lives. I was told that once in, in the church. <laughs> you meddle too much in our lives. I like it when so-and-so preaches. They just make me feel good. Well, Good, praise God, you know? You know? He's a band-aid and I'm a hatchet. I don't know, I'm just telling you. <laughs> but I know I'm gonna be whacking on you because you need it and because you, you know, here's what, what I believe, because you want it. <laughs> because you do want it. So let's just shoot straight. Amen, so, um, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But, oh, thank God. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son. Okay, so we are under the elements of the world, but the word but is there to signal that that doesn't have to be forever. We do not have to be ruled by the elements of this world. We don't. And here's the, here's the best part. We could actually be ruled by the sun. Okay. Because this is going to describe, next it's going to describe the fullness of time where the world was just the world. And then Jesus came into it. And then it's going to say, it's going to show that, that it's not a historical event that's going to save you. It's going to be the coming of that same sun in you. See? Okay, so let's follow that out. Verse 4 again. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son. All right. So let's just hold our horses there and not rush too fast beyond that. The fullness of time, the time when it's when all is fulfilled as far as the heart of the Father is concerned. When I, in this dark world, the Father would say, sent my son to you. Now, as I said, 
it's going to talk about the actual historical event, and then it's going to talk about that in a spiritual way with us. So in the historical event, God sent forth his son to us. And we killed him. Okay? Right? Okay. So now let's no longer talk about the historical event. Let's talk about him, our story. He sends forth his son into us. And what do we do with it? You say, well, I, I would never kill Jesus. I lock him in my heart and I never let him out except for when I'm in trouble. And then I live my life, you know. Then I live my life until I get in trouble, until I have a need. Then I, then I let him out. But I don't kill him, you know. Do you, do you see, there is an analogy here. These scriptures are giving us an analogy of the historical event and then the actual spiritual reality that is the fullness of time for us. The fullness of time, folks, is not um, the day you receive Christ as your Savior. Because in a very real way, you're not receiving the Son that the Father desires. You're receiving somebody that's saving your rear end from punishment and hell and everything else. I mean, even in your mind you are. I received Jesus, Jesus, the Savior. I received Jesus, the healer. Everything we name off is what benefits us about him. But the Son is what benefits the Father, and he wants a living Son. He wants a living son. And this is where he wants him to live. You know, I, people are talking about the, or have talked about the millennium, and, you know, there's going to be a millennium, and Jesus will rule for a thousand years on this earth and everything. He's, you know, Jesus said, they said, how, do, how should we pray? Pray this, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He's not saying pray. it's been how many thousands of years? Over 2,000 years since he had told us to pray that prayer. Either, you know, either God's not answering our prayers because we don't mean it, or the prayer is answered. The kingdom, the king has come. What? Where is the kingdom? Anywhere the king rules. Does he rule in us? A, a king can rule out in the field as long as there are people around him that he's king of, that he rules over. It doesn't have to be a, a castle and a da 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 da. It doesn't have to look like what we think the coming of the kingdom does. The coming of the kingdom doesn't look like anything except Jesus having the say over and in us, over the elements of the world and over the reactions of the flesh that would be responding to the elements of the world. It would be his nature is the spreading of the kingdom where we, we bear his image. We bear his likeness. We bear his nature. So, he goes on to say, well, um, verse 4 again, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. Okay, so he is <clears throat> made under. Now, does that, doesn't that remind you of Philippians 2? Where it says, even though he was God, he thought it not a thing to be grasped after, to be equal with God. I must be equal with God, but was made of no reputation, made himself of no reputation and became as a man, became as a servant, became as a, as a criminal, as a heretic, as a heretic. God, he's the living word and they called him a heretic and saw him as a heretic to their religion. Well, let's not look too far back to find that. <laughs> That can be us. <clears throat> made 
under, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive. He didn't just want to redeem them that were under the law. He wanted to do it so that we could receive the adoption of sons. And then the next several verses are going to give the explanation of that. And, you know, I've taught it so many times for so many years, I just don't feel like preaching the whole thing again on adoption. But adoption, you know, I was in an orphanage. I was around kids that got adopted. Uh, and it, adoption does not have anything to do with adopting a foreign kid and bringing him into your family. Not at all, not even a little bit, okay? Adoption here doesn't. In the world, sure it does. But adoption as understood here, the literal word for it is son placing. <laughs> it's the son getting placed inside of us. Not at salvation, but to, not to redeem us from hell but to redeem us from us. And our either uh, our failures to keep the law or our self-righteousness thinking that we're doing real good. Both have to be defeated. You know, self-pity, self-righteousness, all of that's all one deal, self. You know, well, at least I'm not self-righteous like so-and-so, but I, you know, it's, it's all the same thing. It's just the same. It's ugly, but it's not ugly to us, and that's why it's hard to say, well, that's just ugly, you know, because to God, he is so pure in his selfless giving without, it, you know, thinking of any return that it's just horrendous to him. But to us, we go, well, you know, here's how we, we can describe it's ugly. Somebody did that to me, or said that to me, and then they go, that's ugly. Now, we've probably done the same thing, but it wasn't ugly. So you say, well, Randy, explain that to me. As long as you're alive <laughs> and Christ is not the life in you, then you're going to be a regular flow of bloodbath to everybody around you and not even know how bad you are, okay? All right. I saw a movie a long time ago. I even rebought it on uh, iTunes because it so affected me. It was a very simple premise, but basically, Everybody was going, it, it just showed the, the world and showed certain people, you know, that were the stars of the show, but it showed, you know, people doing nice things and all this kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, something, some bad plague hit the world and everybody was blind. It's the name of its blindness. And people couldn't see anymore. And they, because of that, they couldn't drive, or they couldn't do this, or they couldn't work, or they couldn't do this, and it just became chaos. And everybody was fighting for food, and everybody was fighting for this and that, and you know, and the, and all of a sudden, it begins to show from the, what was in the beginning, all the nice people. It begins to show how, you know, either abused or, you know abusers and it got worse and worse and worse and worse and it was it showed a horrible horrible world because we couldn't see okay but then one day the plague lifted and everything went back to normal and in the first days of it everybody went how can that person you know because they knew who it was that did this, and they knew this and that, and they knew what had happened to them if they were abused on any level. And, but then, slowly, everybody just went back, and they're, thank you very much, you know, and all the, everything looked so civilized. 
to me, that was one of the best pictures of reality of what we really are now. We just have civilized situations going on. We're not put in a situation that would really show how vile or mean or whatever that we are. We're not. But if God just decided to do that in some way, whether by blindness or anything else, you would see a horrible, horrible world. Because, you know, because all of us think we're, we, well, I wouldn't do that, <laughs> you know. So, so let's just say this. If you think that you wouldn't do that, can I pray for you right now and ask the Lord to bring that into your life? so that you can find out and then you'll you know so that you'll get closer to the lord are you ready for me to pray for you <laughs> no i don't want to have to live with it <clears throat> I, at least she's civil to me sometimes just teasing all right i'm not even going to get out of galatians before we <laughs> But this is all impo very important. I don't know if you can see how this really relates to Genesis, how this is a, has almost the exact same elements. And, then, and, and you'll know it more as we go into Genesis and you see the coming of the sun and you see how everything begins to be fulfilled and now, now God is, is not just blessing or doing certain things to get you to the right place, which we call... Christianity. God is just working on me to get me to the right place. This is Christianity. None of us are perfect. No, we're not, but Christ is. And I'm not saying you'll be perfect or he'll be perfect in you, but you need to quit saying none of us are perfect. That excuses this and this and this and this and this. You need to say, I need the son because he's way better than I am. <laughs> Amen. Amen. to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And so he's uh, going from that point on is going to describe our story, not just what happened in the event of sending Jesus 2,000 years ago, okay? He's going to start talking about the, that God redeemed you from uh, self-righteousness or self-pity, self-righteousness, meaning I'm doing pretty good, you know, uh, I'm a good Christian. A self-pity, well, I, you know, I just try, would y'all pray for me? And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with doing any of that to a certain degree because that's what we are. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying don't do that because you will <laughs> until the sun is revealed. <laughs> okay, you, I can't just go, ooh, I preached it, you shouldn't do it. That's stupid. You know, it, it's, it only stops when the sun starts, as it were. All right. Um, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons, or the sun placing. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. All right, so there is that spirit. It is the spirit of his son. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not Eliezer. He was... He was the tutors and governors. He was the guide to get, to get her. Uh, she was already in the family, remember, talking about uh, Rebecca, um, that she was already in the family down in Haran. That was of the same family that they were in. But she didn't know him as husband. She didn't, or, or can I say it like this? She didn't know him in oneness yet. Right? Okay, that's important. So the Holy Spirit is needed for that. That was Eliezer, same guy. But he's not the heir. He's not your life. He's not the one you, you draw life from. He's the one that does all this stuff to reveal Christ. And if you make him the heir or you start calling it, Eliezer, that's what he's doing here, calling Eliezer the heir. You start doing that, and you have violated the very heart of what Father, Son, and Holy Spirit set up. Okay, Christ is that. Jesus is that. 
more specifically, the son of the father's love is that. And he's meant to be your life, and he's meant to be the one that you're joined to so that you think in terms of, I'm not me, I'm joined to somebody. You know what I mean? I mean, that'd be like a husband and wife getting married, and so she goes, well, you know, glad we're married, but I'm still me. I'm going to go out and, you know, where are you going? Well, I'll be gone a few days. I like going hiking. You're going, really? we got kids. And, so, <laughs> and you go, you know, um, uh you know, well, you know, I, I, like, uh, I like going out and getting drunk and having fun. Uh, I don't, and you're me, so let's be one. No, I don't want to be one. I want to, I got to be me. <laughs> I got to be me. I mean, I, I think about Frank Sinatra singing that and standing before God, and God says, sing that song for me. <laughs> You know, I just want to hear it one more time before you go down because you know, you're going to get to be you for all eternity. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> that should make you happy. <laughs> I have a way, don't I? <laughs> I really have a way. <clears throat> and that's why there's two of you in this room and one of you on Skype. Actually, there's a lot more on Skype and more than two here. Um, <clears throat> um, and because you are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. All right. So this isn't he's placing uh, Jesus, the Savior, in you at salvation. This is another experience that you should have already had or can have. Can I get amen on that? How do I know that? Because he's talking about the heir. He says you're already an heir. But you don't have the one that's really the heir, and you haven't related to him in that. And at best, you're calling him Jesus way up, you know, on a throne somewhere. I'm saying at your best, that's what you're doing. At God's best, he wants you in you. And that's, that's the whole thing that God says to Abraham when he brings up Eliezer. He said, this one, this external one is not the heir. It's going to be the internal one that's going to be the heir. That's what he's saying right here. It's the same thing. So he send, here he's not sending forth salvation or the son of, or the or the or the Christ of salvation or he's sending oh my god this is the father moving not god in that sense this is not god saving you this is the father putting the very spirit of his son inside of you that will automatically make you not self-focused crying Abba Father it'll automatically kick self out of the central focus you will continue to grow in that reality but it starts with not you going well thank you I'm glad I'm not you know going to hell you know even if we say, I'm glad I'm saved, we're saved, I'm glad I'm saved so I don't go to hell. I mean, it still all comes down to, uh, it's not somatics. It's always us and what I'm glad that, you know, that I'm still going to be around. You know, that I'm still the issue. That you, you know, for God so loved me. Well, okay, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that you won't perish. But he doesn't leave it like that. He doesn't leave it like that. He, he, he's, coming, he's coming back. I'm coming back to you, and I want to reveal my son in you. So be glad you're saved. Be glad you're not going to hell. But this is going to solve all of that self-emphasis that you've got by one fell swoop by one person 
not the Christ, not the Savior, not the healer, not the deliverer, the Son of the Father's love. In you, crying, Abba, Father. All of that heart now is his heart. All of that passion is his, his passion for the Father, just like the Father's passion for the Son, just like the, the, the Holy Spirit's passion to reveal the Son. And, and uh, I want to say clarity comes, but it's not just, it's not clarity of mind, it's clarity of spirit. Because he says the spirit of his Son. It's a clarity uh, whereby you are not drifting over here into religion or drifting over here into the world or because you know I mean the world is we're self-centered in the world it's about us it's it's my job it's my car it's my this it's my that it's da, 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 da. so we drift over here into religion but it's the same thing it's just religious you know it's my Bible it's my you know, whatever I don't know you know my doctrines you know it's my doctrines I don't agree with that I won't abide that in this church we either run that guy out or I'm leaving. It's all, it's, all, it's all wrong. It's all the wrong spirit. You know? So the son comes in and, and now he says, he doesn't say. He, now his tendency is um, they're wrong and we're going to lay down our life. We're not going to point it all out and try to correct them and get them all straight because now we believe that by laying down our life through death, we'll destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil or this or that or whatever. All, all enemies were dealt with at the cross. You do know that, right? All enemies were dealt with at the cross. Or, can we say it another way? All enemies are dealt with through death. Okay, so at the cross, he defeated all those enemies, but they're not defeated in us until death comes. And it's the death of the son. And I don't want to get into that because that's really the, the heart of this whole Abraham thing and his son. <clears throat> so, um, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. All right. So, um, so you have uh, a different spirit. You're you're no longer a servant. But you're a son. Wait a minute. You're an heir of God through Christ. That's what it says. It doesn't just say, now you're a son. It says, now you're the heir of God through the son. This is the one, the one that was just revealed in you, the one that now is your life, not your helper, not your savior, not your, you know, this or that. Um, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in my mortal flesh. See, that's not, that's not 2,000 years ago, folks. That's not a death that's over with. Yes, there's a death that's over with 2,000 years ago, but there's a nature who goes into death now, today, always, always, always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus. It doesn't say sometimes and then sometimes the life. It says always bearing about the dying that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. Okay? And life, death worketh in me, but life in you. See? Well, who wants that? I mean, who? Come on. Let's be real. Who wants that? I, you know, speaking as somebody or, or maybe me beforehand, I don't want that. I don't want me always dying and everybody always getting off the hook or, you know, not having to suffer for what they, what they did and me going into it and doing all that. I don't want that. I want them to suffer. I want them. You know, this is, this is the only fair way. They need to die. They need to, I'll kill them. You know, they need, <laughs> 
because they do need to die. There's no question here. I'm, you know, Lord, here am I, your servant. Use me. I'll kill them. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, because we're, you know, because that's us. It's like, oh, and this and that. Well, Jesus isn't that way. If he was that way, we'd all be dead. Everybody. But he's not that way, and he's not that way in us. You can argue with that. You can say, I don't like it. You know, you'll like it when it gets revealed in you, trust me, because it's, it's a him, not a, a change of philosophy. It's a him, and the him um, overshadows us. Remember Mary? And the Holy Ghost overshadowed her, and Christ started coming forth. <clears throat> and she didn't go, well, I don't want a baby. It's too much responsibility. Maybe she did before she had him, but then she, she's got the son of God, you know? All right, so did I finish that? Yes, I did. Are we having fun yet? I never did calm down, did I? Nor will I ever. Lord, we just come to you in Jesus' name, in the, in the name of your Son, in the name of the one that we desire and we long for, and we know that that's what you want. You want him. You don't want us good Christians. You don't want us doing everything right. You don't want us deep, deep into great truths concerning the Son without the manifestation of the life. Father, you will deal with that shortly here in, in this very chapter in a few verses down. You will show us, you will show us how you view this and not the way Christianity has taught us, but the way the Spirit of God has taught us Christ. Like you said in Ephesians, for you have not so learned Christ. You didn't tell us not to do that because it's wrong. You said that's not the way you've learned Christ. Father, we, we humble our hearts and we say you have something so strong in you that you want worked into us. And even though we can tack the name son on that or even the son of your love, we don't know until he has been revealed in us as our life, what we've got, who he is. So we just say, Father, that thing that is so strong in you that you desire, the, the purpose for which you set all of creation in motion and our lives in motion, bring it about in us. Bring it about in us. And be glorified in the Son like like he said, like Jesus said, John 17, that we may be one with him, even as you are one with the Father. We want that flow, the flow of life, the flow of reality. So we ask you to do it, not in our name, but in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're done.